Gemara Masech of the Zara Lamadzayin tells us that one of the enactments, one of the rules that the rabbis make is that we cannot eat food cooked by a goy. It is known as Bishulaku, or food that was cooked by a Gentile. And uh, Rishonim, Rashi, Tosafot, Agot Shri, many bring different reasons for why it is forbidden to eat food that cooked by a goy. And one of the reasons is it might lead to intermarriage. People who know how to cook, cook pilaf very good, they become very good friends, and they become very close to certain families. So therefore, it might lead to intermarriage. It might lead to the families of the goyim, the families of the Jews coming too close. Also, if a person is, uh, has goyim cooking for them, it also may be the situation where he might add something non-kosher to the food, and we won't even realize. So therefore, that's why there are multiple reasons why the Chachamim forbade us for eating food co- totally cooked by a goy. Now, that's what Shukhan Ruch writes also in Siman Kuf Yud Gima. Now, the, a little bit of a difference between those two reasons is, let's say you have a Jew who's not religious whatsoever. So at the end of the day, his daughter is Jewish, so you'll be allowed to marry his daughter, so there'll be no problem of Bishul Akum. In that sense, there's no problem him cooking your food, because even if you marry his daughter, uh, his daughter is Jewish. But at the same time, but if the, the reason is because he might add non-kosher food. The guy who's not religious, he doesn't care for these halachot, so therefore he might add non-kosher food to your food. So therefore, that's why Rabbi Yerai writes in Yabi Omer that it's better to be machmir for this opinion that you should try not to get your food cooked by a Jew who's not religious whatsoever. If a person's uh, not religious whatsoever, you're right, he's Jewish at the end of the day, but still, he might add something non-kosher either to him. If he's missing this ingredient, what does it make a difference to him what it is? He's going to add it. So therefore, it's good to be machmir that the person who's cooking the food should be somewhat religious. Also, the Gemara tells us in Amin Hayat that this only applies to certain foods. Not all foods are forbidden if they're cooked by goyim. Only certain foods if they're cooked by goyim. What are they? Either food that goes on a t- the king's table, or, and on top of that, it cannot be eaten raw. So therefore, a person has, like I say, uh, potatoes. Potatoes, they, let's say they go on the president's table, you would serve it at a state dinner, and also you cannot eat potatoes raw. So therefore, it has both problems. So therefore, it's subject to the laws of Bishulakum, and a person will not be able to have such a food if it was cooked by a goy. Another classic case is meat, or fish, or chicken, all these things that people would serve at a state dinner, and therefore, they are subject to the laws, and they also cannot be eaten raw, so therefore, they're subject to the laws of Bishulakum. But, the question becomes, how do you make something Bishul Israel? Okay, so we cannot have food cooked by a goy. So how do we make it food cooked by a Jew? A lot of times we go to restaurants, we go to catering halls, we go to a lot of places to eat, and the people who are cooking are goyim, and they're a Jewish establishment, restaurants are owned by Jews, and their employees are goyim, and the goyim are cooking all the food, so how are we allowed to eat the food over there? How, 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 how do they make it Bishu say? Therefore you have to know that the Jew has to be involved in the cooking. What does it mean that the Jew has to be involved in the cooking? So according to the Beit Yosef, and according to Shukhan Aruch, he explains that the Jew has to put the food on the fire, that's it. That's the only way for to make the food kosher. That the Jews should put the food in the fire. According to the Dakri Moshe, he quotes the Tumat Edition who says, the Ramah, he quotes the Tumat Edition who says, it's enough that the Jew turns on the oven, turns on the stove, turns on the fire. That's enough that's considered Bishul Yisrael. He says, he quotes, even the Maharam. The Maharam Rottenberg says, even if a Jew lights a candle, and from this candle, the Goy takes, alo alo, he takes from this fire and he lights, the stove from this candle the Jew lit, that's also called Bishu Yisrael. He's very, very lenient. And therefore, that's their minhag. You should know that Ramah says, I always, when I come to argue the Shukhan Ruch, I'm not saying the Shukhan Ruch is wrong. I'm just coming to defend the European custom. So therefore, he's saying that that's what the custom of the Europeans were, Ashkenazim, to allow such a thing to call Bishu Yisrael. But according to Svaradim, a person who wants to eat kosher food, according to Shukhan Ruch, every time he goes to a restaurant, every time he goes to a hall, he needs to verify that the Jew cooked the food by putting the food on the fire. You make a shashlik in your backyard, and you invite some uh, goy to go and bake your plov, to make your shish kebab, A to Z, he's going to make it delicious. You have to make sure that you are putting the food on the fire. You cannot just say, well, I bought all the food, it's kosher, everything's kosher, so let him do whatever he wants. No, it's still going to be mishulakum. It's still going to be food cooked by a goy, and it's a sur de rabbanan to eat it. Oh, but I turned on the fire. You're right, that's going to be good for the Ashkenazim, but coins Sfaradim, it's not enough that the Jew turned on fire. You have to have the Jew put it on the fire. So every time you go to a restaurant, you go to a fancy steakhouse, you sit down, you have to ask the Mashgiach, please, 
Can you make sure that my food is going to be Bishul Israel according to Sfaradim? If you say Bishul Israel, he says, What do you mean Bishul Israel? I have turned on the fire. Of course it's Bishul Israel. If you say, No, I want to be Bishul Israel Sfaradi, where the Mashgiach puts the food on the fire. And that way it will be Kashir 100%. You want to say something? What? We're going to talk about Mahar Dusai tomorrow.